Amidst the foggy embrace of mist-shrouded groves, the ancient secrets of Celtic mysticism come to life. Join us on a journey into the heart of Druidic secrets, where sacred whispers of bygone rituals linger in the air. Let Spirit School uncover the shrouded rites that echo through the ancient oaks, transcending time and space. Are you prepared to step into the mystical unknown, where every step is an invitation to learn more of the profound mysteries of the revered Druids? Who were the Celtic Druids? What kind of special powers did they possess that made them the powerful elites of Celtic society? Did they really sacrifice people? Druids were the guardians of Celtic knowledge, but where did they get their knowledge? At Spirit School, we love digging through the rubble of history in search of arcane knowledge and mystic theories. But as we examine the ancient Celtic elite class, we seem to encounter more questions than answers. Can we ultimately lift the heavy fog that conceals these mysterious figures who once ruled a large part of pre-Christian Europe? Join us for part one of this Spirit School episode, The Power of the Celtic Druids. Some Roman sources claim that Druids had the power to converse with the gods themselves. Did the gods give these bearded old men special abilities? Could that really be the source of a power great enough to rule large parts of ancient Europa for centuries? One thing is clear. The Celts were no ordinary folks. They were fierce warriors and raiders, known for their martial prowess and advanced battle tactics. The Celtic world covered a large part of Europe, with their territories stretching from the Iberian Peninsula in the west to the Balkans in the east, and from the British Isles in the northwest to parts of Italy in the south. The might and glory of the Celtic tribes was only curbed by the Germanic tribes to the east and the Romans to the west. In early history, the Celts had nothing to fear from the Romans, as the Romans were terrified of the barbarians to their north. As Roman senator and author Cassio Dio in 230 BC said, these barbarians are more savage than any other people. Whenever they enter a fight, they make loud noises by striking their weapons against their shields in order to terrify the enemy and they do not stand still but move about and they shout in rage so that they inspire fear in the hearts of their enemies. What Senator Dio mentioned here was called the Din of Battle, which is the name given to the cacophony caused by Celtic swords beating against shields. A deliberate tactic used to create an atmosphere of chaos and intimidation that would make the opposing forces more susceptible to the Celts' military advances. It was seen as an effective means of psychological warfare on the battlefield, and it seemed to be working. In 390 BC, they even sacked the city of Rome after they defeated the armies of Rome near the river Allia. They marched on to the city, the Romans that were so terrified by the unexpected onset and the din that they did not even meet the barbarians in battle, but took refuge inside the walls like cowards. They were posing no threat to the Celts, who strolled through the entire city, plundering and starting fires in the overrun capital of the Roman Empire. This no doubt left a scar on Roman collective memory, fueling resentment which lasted many decades to come. The Druids, however, kept themselves out of war itself. They advised where and when to fight, sure, but they themselves had no obligation to go into the military. Neither did they have to pay taxes, nor were they bound by common law, which is probably why so many young men and women aspired to become a member of the Druid class. All in all, were they a powerful force, making decisions about war and peace, even uniting tribes to resist the Romans if they deemed it necessary. The Druids firmly held their position deep in the heart of Celtic culture as mysterious figures, guarding the key to the spiritual and intellectual treasures of the Celtic world. 
These weren't your run-of-the-mill priests. They were the wise storytellers, the celestial navigators, and the guardians of ancient knowledge. They relied mostly on storytelling for sharing their ancient knowledge, not because, like many believe, they were illiterate. Certainly not. In fact, many Druids knew the Greek alphabet. And in later times, when the Romans became such a threat that Druids felt they had to send messages in code, they devised their own form of writing named the Ogham script. Ogham is said to have developed around the year 100 to 400 century AD, but some scholars even date it as far back as the first century BC, mostly used by the Irish Celts for inscriptions on stone, weapons and jewellery. Each letter is represented by a series of notches on a vertical line. The script seems to be inspired by the variety of trees found in the forests. The name Ogham comes from the word Ogma, which is the name of one of the many interesting gods of the Celts, namely the god of elocution or fine speech. But why didn't the Druids write down their knowledge if they had their own script? We will find out soon. Do you want to know more about the powerful and mysterious gods who are said to make these Celtic Druids so powerful? Join the community of seekers of arcane knowledge. Join Spirit School. Like, subscribe and ring the bell on the Spirit School channel so you won't miss part two of the series about Celtic Druids. Let us quickly proceed. The Druids didn't trust any knowledge to scroll or tablet. Never did they write down anything that was of any importance. No spells, no potion recipes, no stories. Although we know that at least some of them were able to write in Greek and Ogham, they did not think it was lawful to write down their arcane knowledge. Students of the Druidic art were obligated to recite many verses and stories by heart. This was part of the elaborate education one had to go through before being allowed to call him or herself a real druid. Yes, I said herself, because there are in fact female druids, but more about that later. Learning all the recitations took students many years. On some accounts, people had to study for about 20 years. The reciting of verses made sure their minds stayed nimble and sharp which was deemed necessary for fulfilling the powerful role of Druid in Celtic society. The Druidic education must have consisted of many topics because they not only took the role of mages, but also advisors to the chieftains of the Celtic tribes, healers with great knowledge of plant medicine, poisons and potions, some make fun of the musical bards, but even bardism was a divine branch of Druidism, creating sounds capable of great magic. They were masters of the courts, judges, lawyers, and even executioners. Some Roman sources tell us prisoners were locked up in enormous wooden statues called wickermans. These statues were then set ablaze on special occasions where ritual sacrifice was called for. They had great capabilities in the fields of math and astronomy. Their knowledge of cosmic events was of great import. The tribes celebrated the winter and summer solstice and performed rituals at certain moon phases. The Druids were so powerful because they held such a wide position in Celtic society that nowadays would hardly be possible. At least in Europe, we are supposed to have trias politica, also known as a separation of powers of the state, which was an idea of Charles-Louis de Seconda, Baron de la Brede et de Montesquieu. His friends probably just called him Charles Montesquieu for short. This fellow who lived during the Enlightenment came up with the fine notion to let the men who make the law enforce the law and judge by the law, not the same body of people, to make sure we cannot be judge, jury, and executioner in one. Well, the Druids were not burdened by such formality. Just imagine a tight-knit cult-like group of people fulfilling the roles of doctor, senator, judge, lawyer, priest, oracle, teacher, and scientist all in one. This, of course, created a very powerful entity in the Celtic society. Now that we have gained a little more understanding where the Druids' power came from, it is only logical 
that the Romans saw them as a big threat. Druids, due to their knowledge and influence, were sometimes called upon to negotiate treaties or agreements between neighboring tribes. Their diplomatic skills and ability to navigate complex social and political situations were assets in fostering peaceful relations. They might administer oaths and rituals to solidify agreements with the belief that violating such oaths would incur spiritual consequences. This added a supernatural dimension to treaties and agreements. The punishment for breaking such an oath must have been grave. But the question if Druids really sacrifice humans has always been contested by various scholars. We like to think of the Druids as friendly bearded hippies merrily brewing potions that give the Gallic troops superpowers to fight the Roman legions. But we should keep in mind that reality is nothing like most comic books. Questions of violence often got answered by more violence. Certainly in the time of ancient Celts, recent finds appear to confirm this. Perhaps the most incriminating evidence is the 2,000-year-old bog-mummified body of Lindo Mann, discovered in Britain in the 1980s. Lindo Mann's manicured fingernails and finely trimmed hair and beard suggest that he may have been of high status, possibly even a druid or chieftain himself. He was the victim of a carefully staged sacrifice. Lindo Man's head had been violently smashed and his neck had been slashed in a way that his lifeblood would have made a big, gruesome fountain. Another clue lay inside the body's well-preserved gut. Pollen grains from mistletoe, a plant that was sacred to the Druids. Romans wrote the Druids cut mistletoe from trees with golden sickles, and the plant was so sacred that they never let it touch the ground during the harvest of it. Lindoman's death is dated to around AD 60, when the Romans launched a new offensive in the island of Great Britain. He may have been sacrificed to persuade the Celtic gods to halt the Roman advance. In part two of the deep dive into the Druids, we will discuss the various gods of the Celtic people. Subscribe to Spirit School so you won't miss it. In the meantime, enjoy the next video.